The largest super eruption ever recorded at the Yellowstone volcano has been discovered by scientists, finding that the event, which occurred 8.7 million years ago, covered an area the size of New Jersey with superheated volcanic glass. The eruption, which researchers have dubbed the Gray's Landing Super Eruption, was about 30% larger than the previous record holder. Material from the eruption covered an area about 8,800 square miles, an area the size of New Jersey, making it the largest and hottest eruption ever documented from the Yellowstone hotspot the scientists wrote in the journal Geology. The eruption occurred in what is now modern-day southern Idaho. The massive Gray's Landing eruption is one of two newly identified eruptions in the Snake River Yellowstone volcanic region. The other, the McMullen Creek eruption, occurred about 9 million years ago and was larger than the last two major eruptions at Yellowstone. It covered an area of more than 4,600 square miles. A team of researchers led by Thomas Knott, a volcanologist at the University of Leicester in the United Kingdom, examined volcanic deposits that were previously thought to have formed during several small eruptions. By combining a variety of techniques to analyze the rocks, including mineral chemistry, paleomagnetic data, and terrain characterization, they found that the deposits were huge sheets of volcanic material from two previously unknown super eruptions, not said in a statement. The Gray's Landing eruption coated an area the size of New Jersey with super hot volcanic glass that instantly sterilized the ground surface. The particles would have choked the stratosphere, showering the entire United States with fine ash and gradually blanketing the globe. Anything in the area at the time of the eruption would have been vaporized. It was one of the five largest eruptions of all time, he said. He told Newsweek that the eruption could have been larger but the team chose to be conservative in estimating its size because they had not yet identified products from the eruption that had been ejected further away. The researchers said the findings increase the number of known super eruptions from the Yellowstone hotspot. Yellowstone's last explosive eruption occurred about 640,000 years ago. Since then, about 80 relatively non-explosive eruptions have occurred, the USGS said. The new findings suggest that our understanding of the timing of Yellowstone's major eruptions needs to be revised and that the hotspot may be decreasing. The discovery of two major eruptions during the Miocene, an era that lasted between 23 and 5.3 million years ago, suggests that Yellowstone was producing major eruptions about every 500,000 years of the time. There have been two major eruptions at the Yellowstone hotspot in the past 3 million years, putting the current rate of super eruptions at about 1 every 1.5 million years. This is a very significant decrease, not said in a statement.
The size, frequency, and emplacement temperatures of supereruptions have decreased over time, the researchers wrote. Taken together, these features suggest that hotspot activity may be beginning to decline. Not told Newsweek that it's hard to say whether Yellowstone will ever go dormant. It's not, and I think that's the most important point right now and it needs to be monitored continuously by the USGS. We're putting forward the idea that Yellowstone may have been in decline since the mid-late Miocene, he said. That's not to say that nature can't suddenly increase its activity. But my colleagues and I are certainly interested in why this decline has occurred over time and what exactly that means. Michael Poland, the scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, who is not involved in the study, said the latest findings are intriguing and that the research shows there's still a lot of work to be done to sort out the eruptive history of past volcanic centers in the Yellowstone Belt. By doing a very thorough job, the authors were able to correct some misinterpretations and also tell a fascinating story about the eruptive history of some of these older centers, he told Newsweek. In the context of waning of hotspots, that's certainly an interesting result of this study, but it's not an entirely new idea. Plate movement brings hotspots to cooler, thicker areas of crust, which may make it more difficult to form and transport magma. We might expect activity to decrease over time because of this fact. 